Hi, welcome to another episode of the Weekly Feedback. I'm your host, Caveman PR DR, and today we got some uh, got some things to talk about. Um, first, we'll bring up a uh, a Bungie help tweet from this past week. From this past week, regarding the latency issues that have been occurring during season 19, um, we've been tracking a new latency issue that began at the start of season 19, which manifested differently than typical latency as of February 3rd. Our external partners identified and fixed the issue that was impacting network quality between players during our peak hours. So, I guess basically according to Bungie, it wasn't necessarily on their end. Why the game was getting issues with uh, latency. We'll see a little bit more of this later in the TWAB where they talk about it. So, uh, we'll discuss it a little bit further there. Um... My initial reaction to this is obviously if anyone's been, uh, if any of the viewers have been keeping up with the weekly feedback, y'all know I've posted videos, I've posted clips where I uh, talk about my disgust of the uh, issues with the latency for a little bit. Um, it's been really bad this season. Ever since the second week, the latency has been pretty bad. It's been very noticeable in PvP. Lately, it's been noticeable for me in PvE, but... Uh, yeah, it sucks. hate that it's been happening, but it is what it is. We'll go on to the next subject, which is one of the dev articles and the Strand trailer itself. Bungie has released a trailer for Strand, which you can watch the gameplay and watch how the abilities and things work. Threads make the Guardian, where they introduce a little bit about their uh, initial ideas with the strand and the themes that they uh, had useful for uh, where uh, they had inspir where they drew inspiration from we're going to go on to a little bit in the article into the article more where they talk about uh, the three types of debuffs you can put on enemies from using strand which are suspend unravel and sever Past that in the article, they talk about the ability to use grapple and how you can use it on tangle or on tangle points. You see a little bit of that during this during the trailer as well. They go over the uh, each class individually and their subclasses, how how the interactions with Strand go, and they talk about how uh, the aspects for the individual ones. Warlocks gets Weaver's Call. Mindspun, Invocation, Grapple, Threadling Grenade, and Shackle Grenade. So these basically introduce uh, Warlocks, interactions with grenades and stuff. Hunters are called Threadrunners. They get two aspects which are called Ensnaring Slam and with Widow Silk. Titans are called the Berserker. They get into the fray and I'm assuming Dranger's a Lash. Don't really know how to pronounce it. If you do... Let me know in the comments. And then at the very end of the article, they talk about, or they introduce three of the new fragments that are going to be in Strand, which include Thread of Ascent, Thread of Fury, Thread of Finality, and Thread of Warding. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description down below for y'all to look at. I'm not going to go over every little thing. Then they have... Another Bungie Dev article where they basically take another look at the 3.0 subclasses and do some ability changes and revertings. So, specifically, first to note, rescaling efficacy of discipline strength and each class ability stat on grenade melee and class ability regenerates. So, anything that is Tier 8 right now in our current system is going to be Tier 10 in the new system. So when you invest Tier 10 into a stat in the future, it's going to have Tier 8 effects now. The They're basically wanting us to revert back a little bit on the ability spam and get back a little bit more focused on the gunplay. And I think this is going to be a good thing to do. And there are places where... Uh, Certain upgrade tiers for certain abilities are not exactly linear. Like, you may get a larger bump investing into Tier 4 from Tier 3 than you get from Tier 7 to Tier 8, for example. 
Like, obviously, the further you build into something, the lower the overall cooldown is, but some of them vary in differences in cooldowns and seconds. So they plan on rebalancing those for some abilities to where uh, it's more of an even uh, cooldown distribution. And then there are some uh, mods that they have listed that will be available after the next... Uh, after this mod update, these uh, will be returning here, including Bomber Outreach, Impact Induction, Utility Kickstart, Melee Kickstart, Grenade Kickstart, Invigoration Insulation, Innervation Hands-On, Ashes to Assets, and Dynamo. Hunter cooldown nerfs that were implemented in 6.3.0.5 are getting reverted. So we are getting buffs to the dodge roll again. And when I say buffs, I mean back to the way it was before. So, it was a nerf reversion, which is, it was kind of odd to begin with, but I wasn't necessarily against it as long as the Warlock one got nerfed and the Warlock one did not get immediately nerfed, but they're all going to be nerfed in the future, so it doesn't matter. When in Rome, so they talk about the lack of use of roaming supers in PvE, so they're changing up how... Uh, these supers and one-off supers are effective in PvE. So roaming supers can get up to seven total orbs down from five or up from five. And one-off supers are decreased from a total of seven up down to a total of five orbs regen. Orb generation from Well of Radiance, Ward of Dawn, and both Shadow Shots variants are unchanged from the one-off supers change. Hammer of Soul, Daybreak, and Spectral Blades are getting a cooldown buff, which is almost a minute. It's like a minute and nine seconds. Ward of Dawn has decreased maximum health. Armor of Light that comes in Ward of Dawn is being uh, decreased maximum health. Thunder Crash getting a nerf. For PvP specifically. Spark of Resistance getting a nerf for PvP. Daybreak getting buffs in PvE, which include super cost energy and PvE damage in general. Phoenix Dive getting a buff in general. Crash Test Guardians. Um, say your friend tries to eager edge you into a wall, you should survive whenever Lightfall comes around. So, getting a little bit less trolled. If you jump off the side of the map, you're still going to die, obviously. But that's how that works now. Arc is getting two new fragments, Spark of Insight and Spark of Haste. Solar is getting Fire Sprite, which is the new version of the Solar Elemental Will. Ember of Mercy and Ember of Resolve are both new fragments. Emperor of Tempering, Emperor of Combustion, and Emperor of Searing are existing fragments that are getting reworked. Void Breach is the new Void Elemental Well. Echo of Cessation and Echo of Vigilance are new fragments being introduced. Echo of Domineering, Echo of Harvest, and Echo of Starvation are fragments that are being slightly reworked. And that is it for the Light 3.0 updates. For now, and now we're going to talk about this week at Bungie. Not a whole lot mentioned in here, kind of a, kind of a short one. Support for Syria and Turkey, first and foremost. I really appreciate that Bungie does this sort of thing. It's awesome to see them uh, go out of their way to make it where, uh, make it easy for Guardians to support those that are in need. I really like that they uh, do that and they advertise being able to do these uh, donation goals and things through uh, the TWAB because they know that their updates get a lot of attention. Um, early in the TWAB, it also has a link to the Strand gameplay trailer. Um, first topic they really talk about is uh, latency and basically there's a graph that's showing the issues with the latency they had over the season, they tried to uh, go over uh, their reasoning for basically Steam being kind of the reason why this was happening. 
And they thought as of February 3rd, which you'll kind of look around here and see, that they think uh, the issues have largely been resolved. I personally think that there may still be issues, especially for PvE, but we'll have to wait and see what future updates say. Or what future twabs say. But this uh, this highest spike right here was the most recent Iron Banner. Or not the most recent, sorry. The first Iron Banner. Not the most recent one. The first one where the game was laggy beyond belief. It felt like, uh, to me personally, it felt like ever since week two, the game had been unbearable until like week seven. And then it started getting a little bit better. But it's still kind of inconsistent. So this was part of the Twitter post that I read out to y'all earlier. We'll move on from that to uh, Strand's interactions with finishers. So they uh, show here an interaction with a finisher. Strand's interaction with Solstice Armor. Previous Solstice Armor. And then uh, they mention some other things that Strand has interactions with in the game. Including exotic emotes, exotics in their ornaments, ghost projections... And then perks in the game, including Elemental Capacitor, Osmosis Explosive, Payload, Dragonfly, Cluster Bombs, Chain Reaction, Monochromatics, uh, Chromatic Fires, sorry, not Monochromatic, Chromatic Fires, um, Internal, Intrinsic Perk, uh, Mantle of Battle Harmonies, Intrinsic, Bombardiers, Intrinsic, Verities, Brow, Intrinsic, Intrinsic, Felwinter's Helm, Helm's Intrinsic, and then more interactions with exotics later on. Does this update resonate with you? So this is basically them announcing that they will be completely removing resonant elements from the game, so that's one less material for crafting we have to deal with. Uh, Prime Day for some Prime Gaming, so they talk about the skins that are going to be released from the Prime Gaming, including two from Sunshot, a thing with the uh, the Jotun uh, speeder, or the I will always call it a speeder, the Jotun Sparrow, and the season of the Seraph uh, emblem, I guess, for the uh, for the Ghost Transmat, I believe. That might be what it is. We asked new answers, and things got creepy crawly. So uh, the spiders versus beetles. Uh, Next festival of the lost voting for armor sets. Hunters had a majority for Team Spider. Titans had a majority for Team Spider. Warlocks had a majority for Team Beetle. I personally preferred the entire Team Beetle outfit set over the Team Spider set, but the uh, the fans speak for themselves. Um, Trials Radiant Cliffs had won the. Uh, the Trials fan voting for the season. Radiant Cliffs had won the fan voting for the for the season for the Trials map. It was a map of three absolutely terrible maps that play horrifically in Trials. Um, of the three, I probably I personally preferred Twilight Gap, but uh, none of the maps were great. I'm still confused why Radiant Cliffs won, considering the map is so glary. I personally don't like it, but it is what it is. Some things to round out the end of the TWAB include the Destiny Content Vault update. So basically, they put a link in here to show you what is being vaulted at the end of the season, and then some items being deprecated at the start of year six, which is obviously Lightfall. So yeah, that was pretty much uh, pretty much all that I wanted to cover this week. Thank you for sticking around. I appreciate it. I will leave links for these for y'all to take a look at for those of you who are interested in the comments down below again thank you for watching and have a good day